talking about uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome uh, ending the never ending story i bring you greetings from sir gangaram hospital in new delhi so many doctors give a label of ibs to any chronic intestinal problem once other disorders have been ruled out but this is not true patients actually may present with heartburn nausea vomiting bloating gas pain in abdomen constipation diarrhea and when we work uh, uh, them up we find that some, some of them have organic causes behind them like cancer infections tuberculosis ibd peptic ulcers celiac disease but many of them do not have any uh, structural cause and they are uh, because of the functional cause and there is no st uh, structurally abnormality detected so these are called as functional gastrointestinal disorders or uh, functional gi disorders and um, to classify and um, correlate all these functional disorders uh, rome uh, foundation was uh, founded in the 1990s which now constitute about 144 experts from 27 countries and now the fourth rome criteria has, was published in 2016 and the fifth one is being developed so they this rome foundation actually classifies all the functional gi disorders and they range from esophageal disorders gastrointestinal disorders and esophageal disorders like heartburn gastrointestinal gastrointestinal disorders like uh, dyspepsia bloating bowel disorders like irritable bowel syndrome and then gallbladder disorders anorectal disorders so all these functional disorders where no organic uh, cause can be found are now classified by the rome foundation the most frequent symptom of functional gastrointestinal disorder in indian patient is gas every time patients come with gas i have got gas but if we try to uh, uh, ask these patient what do they mean by gas they all will say something different for example even esophageal disease if the patient is having heartburn they'll say he is uh, feeling gas in the uh, heart if they are having bloating sensation if they are having belching they'll say it is gas which is coming out when they are uh, ibs then also they'll say it's gas when they are having uh, abdominal bloating or lower abdominal bloating then also gas and even in anorectal disorders they'll say it's gas so gas has got a sing single symptom which is uh, told by the patient but it has got it can be have myriad of uh, problems underlying so how common are functional uh, gastrointestinal disorders uh, the worldwide prevalence was uh, estimated to be around 40% uh, patients have functional disorders and um, uh, in, even in uh, these functional disorders uh, like functional dyspepsia are about 7% functional constipation 11% irritable bowel syndrome is around 4% uh, and functional diarrhea 4% and then functional disorders which cannot be uh, classified in any of these disorders are uh, up to 11% and then there was an indian study also uh, where uh, they tried to estimate uh, it was a multi center study and they found that ibs prevalence in india was about 4.2 to 7.5% so what is the pathogenesis of functional uh, gi disorders and uh, people have been working uh, on this uh, pathogenesis for years together initially it was thought that only the motility of the gastrointestinal system which is involved and it is in uh, leading to uh, this uh, constipation or diarrhea but now it's a lot of things are there like brain gut interaction is the central microbiome intestinal microbiota is involved inflammation is involved and visceral hypersensitivity so the central to the pathogenesis is the gut brain axis uh, where the in a predisposed individual there where there is a genetically predisposed individual where when he has faced certain environmental factors or there have been certain early life events these factors have these patients have got certain psychological factors or they have developed visceral hypersensitivity and then motility is of course involved in this uh, disorder apart from this recently there has been found that there is also low grade inflammation going on in the intestine and there is also a uh, role of gut permeability which is becomes more permeable and there is also a low grade inflammation 
so central to it is the gut brain axis but also when there are certain antigens or pathogens in the gut lumen which also get inside the uh, to the uh, side junction and they uh, lead to some inflammation in the gut uh, lamina propria and lead to low grade inflammation mast cell activation as well as eosinophil activation and also there is a gate control theory that the brain uh, gut axis that uh, many of these pain sensations can be uh, mediated by the gate control theory so to summarize the first part of my talk functional gi disorders are very common they are up to 40% of general population and ibs is one of the functional uh, gastrointestinal disorder there are others like functional constipation 12% There is dyspepsia, seven percent unspecified, eleven percent, and then brain gut axis or abnormal motility, visceral hypersensitivity are uh, important pathogenic factors. The uh, recent role of microbiome, gut inflammation, permeability, and the CNS processing is important. Coming to the second part of my talk, that is on IBS itself. IBS basically means when there is pain in abdomen as in association with altered bio bowel habit. usually the onset is for more than 6 months but following criteria must be fulfilled for last 3 months to label it as ibs one uh, it there should be recurrent abdominal pain and it should be at least uh, every week there should be uh, painful period is there and plus apart from the pain the uh, pain should be related to defecation or either in the change in frequency of stool or change in uh, form of stool so pain plus altered bowel habit is ibs but if there is no pain then we cannot label him as ibs and these patients would be functional dyspepsia or functional uh, constipation or functional diarrhea so what is the uh, frequency of ibs uh, uh, what is the clinical profile of patients of ibs so this large study which was conducted in 2008 where uh, multiple centers were involved even dr rajesh osadya who was here yesterday he was also in one of the authors for this study and it was found that apart from pain incomplete evacuation was there in all these patients whether they present with the constipation whether they present with diarrhea or indeterminate then patients also complained with uh, of mucus with stool then lower abdominal discomfort was in about 80% of patients and with the passage of stool or with defecation most patients said that their pain was relieved and also they many of these patients had straining during passing the stool there was upper abdominal discomfort and some of these patients said that their gas was going into their head or they were having headaches tiredness and back pain so all these is the symptom profile of uh, ibs patients and many times uh, we face these ibs patients and they uh, give a very Uh, abnormal uh, uh, responses for example one patient uh, said the doctor i need help Uh, this was his whatsapp chat when the doctor said what happened to you he said i'm having severe constipation and when the doctor asked you how many times are you passing the stool he said i am passing 3 to 4 times in a day so then even though he is passing 3 to 4 times a day then also he is saying that uh, uh, he is having severe constipation so when the doctor asking that you are passing stool so many times a day why do you say you are constipation and then the, he says that pet saaf nahi hota that he is getting incomplete evacuation so there is always a difficulty in diagnosing whether the patient is having constipation or whether having uh, diarrhea so for this reason the rome foundation has created a bristol stool form scale so this we should have all in our opd and we should show this to the patient the what kind of stool he is passing so if there is a lumpy or a separate lump like stool or sausage like stool then it is called constipated stool that is called as type 1 or type 2 if the stool is very fluffy pieces ragged as is a watery no solid pieces these are the diarrheal stool and in between there are three types of abnormal uh, stool and based on this uh, either patient is having diarrhea or constipation then ibs is also sub type if more than 25% of time the patient is having constipation then he is labeled as ibs c or ibs constipation predominant ibs if more than 25% of time the patient is having diarrhea then he is labeled as ibs b sometimes the patient is having alternate with diarrhea or constipation then these are called as mixed type ibs or ibs m 
and when it cannot be specified then it is ibs unspecified or unclassified so uh, we must classify ibs into one of the four types so how do we approach a patient when we suspect ibs in these patients so patients uh, uh, these patients when they meet the rome criteria that means they are having uh, 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 pain abdomen and then uh, at least uh, once uh, in every week for last 3 months then we should look for any alarm features which are very important so alarm features like if there's blood in stool or if there's unintended weight loss if the age is more or if there's fever if there's nocturnal awakening or if there's a family history of colorectal cancer or if there is um, uh, evidence of any iron deficiency anemia then we should be careful that if these alarm features are there then he may not be having ibs so if the alarm features are there then we should further investigate these patients uh, do colonoscopy do ct scan or other investigation but if the alarm features are absent then we have to we can proceed and we can suspect them to be having ibs and we just need to do limited number of investigations like complete blood blood count c reactive protein fecal calprotect ping is a new test and celiac disease serology with these tests if all of these are normal we can safely label them as uh, a ibs and but if some of these are abnormal we have to further investigate and once we have diagnosed them as ibs as i mentioned before if more than 25% of times they are having constipation then it is uh, ibs c if more than 25% of the time they are having uh, uh, diarrhea then it is ibs d or if they if there's alternative between constipation and diarrhea then it's ibs m we must type these patients so i mentioned about stool calprotectin it's a new test where calprotectin is a calcium or zinc binding protein and uh, it is mainly found in the neutrophils and throughout the human body but if it is present in the feces uh, it means there's inflammation going on in the uh, intestine so most likely it is an inflammatory process uh, so fecal uh, calprotectin concentration demonstrate that there, uh, there is intestinal inflammation is going on so if fecal calprotectin is normal then the patient is having ibs if it is elevated then we have to suspect inflammatory bowel disease what is the treatment of ibs so for, once we have diagnosed the patient as uh, having ibs there are two things which are very important we are, since it's a chronic illness and it is uh, uh, very much related to the psychological state of patient as past history and uh, he is going to uh, come back uh, again uh, to the doctors uh, for poor relief so we must establish a good doctor patient relationship and we must uh, label this uh, diagnosis as a positive diagnosis and not a negative diagnosis and we must share with this with the patient that it's uh, the this a uh, not a serious disease it's not going to kill the patient but if we manage it uh, properly then uh, he'll be uh, his quality of life will improve we must educate the patient and reassure the patient the second thing is the lifestyle modification as in uh, lifestyle modification for so many other chronic diseases even the ibs requires lifestyle modification especially dietary uh, modification is to be uh, given we should increase the soluble fiber mm-hmm. the uh, fodmaps increase of uh, physical activity avoid stress and sleep deprivation for ibs c uh, patients if the uh, we should assess the se- severity if the severity is less we should for ibs c patient we can only give osmotic laxative for ibs m patient uh, anti osmotic and for ibs d uh, simple anti diarrheal like lupramide if this pain is there for uh, these patients anti osmotic will help across the board for ibs c we can give uh, brucalopride and other uh, constipation uh, reliever for ibs m and d rifaximin is an excellent drug for 4 to 6 weeks therapy it relieves these patients and if the symptoms have been severe then we must add certain antidepressants for ibs c patients we add ssris for ibs m or ibs d we add tricyclic antidepressant and we also give psychotherapy to these patients what is low fodmap dye fodmap means fermentable oligosaccharides disaccharide monosaccharide and polyol Uh, these fodmap diets leads to high osmotic load and high uh, colonic gas production is there so if we uh, and uh, multiple studies and meta analysis have shown that low fodmap diet is better for 
uh, irritable bowel syndrome uh, syndrome because it relieves their symptoms so how do we change the low fodmap diet uh, we must avoid uh, in vegetables uh, we must avoid garlic beans and onions uh, while we can give lettuce uh, carrot or fruits we must uh, avoid these blackberry watermelon peaches but strawberries pineapple are okay for proteins uh, sausages and uh, fish and breaded meals are to be avoided while chicken and poultry are okay for fats also uh, almond avocado has to be avoided but oils and butter peanuts are okay and similarly for starch dr ashish please summarize yeah yeah this is the last slide uh, beans and gluten has to be avoided so so this is the last slide ibs is a specific form of functional gastrointestinal disorder characterized by pain plus altered bowel habits apart from pain and altered bowel many patients also have other functional symptoms such as dyspepsia bloating gas ibs has four subtypes ibs c ibs d ibs unspecified and ibs mixed type diagnosis is clinical with minimal tests required and treatment is symptomatic thank you for your patient care